Hello and welcome to another budget and leg it video. Today I'm going to be making something. I did a video uh, a few days ago on a diff and basically what's in the diff and stuff like that and it's very difficult to hold it in a vise and try and film at the same time so I'm going to make a holder for it because I've got some more videos coming up on it so I'll be able to hold it and show it on the camera a lot easier. Well that's the plan. Now I basically demolished an old bar chair. So as you can see there's an old bar chair. I've just cut bits of box steel off. Now I've no plan in my head, I'm just winging this. Uh, well I've no plan written down, sorry, I've got it kind of in my head. I don't know if it's going to work. It's kind of the way I do things. I don't particularly like writing things down. I just like to get on with it and do it. What I'm thinking is, I've done a few things. I've, all I've basically done, I haven't done anything yet, I've just cut everything because there's no point me showing you on camera cutting everything because that would just be boring. I've got a couple of arms here, so I'm going to weld these little tabs on the two arms in the middle because I need this to be able to be turned 180 degrees 90 degrees I've got another this is all off the same chair by the way box out and I've just cut down the sides of each edge so I could fold this metal in as you can see it's folded in like that so I can fit the bearing now the idea behind the bearing is I'm going to mount the bearing on some sort of plate and that will allow me to spin the whole thing as you can see whichever direction I need to do it so that's what I'm thinking that's going to basically come through here like that. Then I'm going to put this piece of metal over the top of everything to hold everything in place. Kind of like that, bolt it down. These legs are going to be adjustable and hopefully clamp onto the diff. That's the plan anyway. Like I said, I don't know if I'm winging this as I'm going along. The idea, what I thought of, this is just a car bearing, just a normal old car bearing. It's not great, as you can see, but it's, it's going to be fine for what we need. I'm also going to put this old collar bearing. So this is, this is, there used to be a bearing in this. I'm just going to use the collar of it. I'm going to slide this down here. I'm going to weld it to our bearing here. And I'm going to drill a hole straight down. And this is what I'm going to use for my lock. So as I spin this, I can just drop a bolt and I'm going to lock this from spinning all the way. So again, this is the plan. Don't know if it's going to work, but I think it will. So, I'll just run through quickly the sizes of everything. Now again, I've, I haven't done this, I've just kind of done this by eye thinking it should be okay. The two legs are 11 inches long, it's two main legs. These two little um, feet, you could say, they're three inches long. Now this, at the minute, is ten and a half inches but I don't know I might be cutting this down I've just left this long for the minute I don't know exactly how long um, I'm going to keep it that is really it's going to be as simple as that I haven't worked out the base yet so I'm going to kind of work out the base as I go along this might change as I'm doing the video so uh, because I'm going to think of things and think oh yeah that's a good idea just like I thought with the bearing I had another mind but then I realized I had bearing so I kind of put the bearing in because I think that's going to be kind of cool and it incorporates a bit of car in it as well so yeah what i'm going to do is there's no point me showing the welding i'm just going to weld everything and i'll turn the cam back off as i've welded it or done anything like that the most important thing is when you're welding anything to make sure you keep everything nice and clean otherwise you won't get a great weld because uh, no point in me showing the welding because not everyone's going to have a welder but you're just going to get the idea of what i'm doing and how it's going together so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to weld these little legs onto these arms. So I'm going to do that first. Once I've done that, I'll turn the camera back on and uh, we'll get cracking. Now, who remembers Apollo 13, I think it is? How to fit a square peg in a round hole? That's how you do it. An anger grinder and a welder. That's all they needed on the space station or the space shuttle, even. Big deal. Now, as you can see, I've done that. So that's welded both sides. I put grease in it. I mean, I don't really need to. Um, obviously with the heat of the weld it's kind of done damage to the bearing but again we're not using it as a as a fast speed bearing so it's not really the end of the world so that's done the two little legs are done so they're all nicely welded so they're done again done sorted so, so this is what I'm thinking I'm gonna put this other collar down on this bearing and I'm going to tack the collar to this bearing. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a hole straight through the bearing, straight through the metal and out the other end. Twist this 90 degrees and drill it. So I've got basically, I've got four locking points 
on this bar which should allow me to do it in 90 degree sections all the way around to 360 degrees and this here is going to be my lock so I'm going to do that and then we need to cut two of these I'm going to have to drill three holes in each and that's to mount my arms my arms are going to be adjustable also it's going to mount the, the bearing part in the middle as well and the far leg now I'm not sure on spacings or anything like that yet so what I'm going to do is I'm going to weld this up and then I'm going to kind of put everything together and dry fit and see see how long I need these bars to be and then uh, we'll turn the camera back on I've got my base and believe it or not I had an old tow bar out the back so this is a tow bar I think this is off a of Merc this is the part that connects underneath the car this is the ball hitch and what I've done is I've cut off one end of it which has left me with this nice little plate with three holes in so the holes are ready to bolt onto the table and this will weld straight to it so if you imagine say this on the table like that now I could actually just vice grip this to the table and kind of move it around me or use these three holes to bolt it permanently but I'll worry about that later but so if you imagine this is the this is the uh, thing this is just going to be welded straight onto there I'm going to drill a hole straight down there which will lock it for me and as you can see here it is simple as that so this is recycling 101 because we have bits out of a bearing of a car bits off a tow bar this is a chair and okay this I did buy ages ago but that is the only thing I've actually brought and I bought that a long time ago so um, yeah sorted I'm gonna weld this to here I'll turn the camera back on once I've done that we'll work out the actual rest of it then right we're getting there I've just drilled holes and before anyone says why are you using expensive tools my drill press is just one of them cheap ones from Audi's and I have to say unbelievable I think that was 69 euros the only thing you do need to do is make sure you've got some really good quality drill bits like that drill bit alone was 15 euros but it is a really really good one and it just I put these two pieces together and you can see how thick it is and it just went through this as if it was butter if you're drilling holes like this in a plate you want to put the two the two plates together and drill the hole so then you know you've got them lined up properly so all I've done is I've drawn, drilled four holes in each plate. I've drilled holes in the two ends. This is where the bolt's going to go on the diff and this is where it's going to go into the plate. I've changed my lock mechanism slightly because this metal is very, very tough. Not even my really good drill bits go through it. And not only that, because I've welded and heated up so much, when the metal goes back, when it goes cold, it, it, it toughens up. So it basically toughens the metal. Anyway, there's no way around it. So what I've done... I've got, again it's off a car, this is an old exhaust clamp which I've welded on to the bearing so it just comes like that. I've drilled a, a hole for a bolt to go through so as we can see. So the bolt goes through, just like that. It comes through the other side, not supposed to. and I wanted to get a wing nut but they didn't have any wing nuts so I've had to make a wing nut myself I got two washers and I've just welded it onto a bolt and what that will allow me to do is as you can see is spin this on just like that because it's a wing nut it means I can take it on and off quite easy so if you imagine this on the bench as you can see it's now locked and it's locked quite solid it's not going to move anywhere but then if I want to move this around because the diff's in the wrong place what I can do is don't drop the lock nut take this bolt out and I can twist this 90 degrees put it back twist it another 90 so I can completely twist it 90 degree sections at a time to get the diff in any position I need and then lock it off with this simple um, lock washer well wing nut sorry and a piece of old exhaust clamp sorted get this baby together see what it looks like right we have a storm brewing outside so I apologize about the noise now um, these plates by the way are 
I just cut the, the bar I had in half and they were 15, 15 inches in length. So like I said, I haven't wrote anything down for this. I'm just kind of winging this as I'm going along. But what I'm going to do is, they're going to be a sandwich plate. So I need a bolt. I bought new nuts and bolts, but they're only a couple of quid. So the nuts and bolts weren't expensive by any stretch of the imagination. And I've done two holes, just so if I have a bigger or smaller dip, I might have a bit more um, adjustability. And I don't know if I need them, maybe I'll only use one hole, I don't know. But it was no harm for me to do that in the way I was doing this. So Now also what I've done is I've brought lock nuts to these bolts. I'm not going to completely tighten the lock nut. I'm only, I'm, I'm going to have it so this will still move. It's not going to be as loose as this, but I, I want this to move and this is going to give me more adjustability. So I'm going to tighten the lock nuts just until they're about to get snug and that will kind of let this move, but it won't release the lock nuts. Well, again, that's the plan. One thing I have to do before I put that on is put the other plate on. And because I drilled the holes together, all these holes should line up no problem at all. Now hopefully you're going to get the idea of what this thing is going to start looking like. Now to be honest, I don't know if this is going to work yet. I, I think it will. <laughs> Should do. Right, so that is essentially the machine built. So, if you imagine this here end bolted to a, a, ch a frame or anything you know, just so it's basically secure. And these legs then can move in and fit onto the diff. So, I'm gonna try it. I'll put it in my vise. Ah, so as we can see, we've got adjustment here. These come in, in and out together. That's what's gonna cramp on the diff. But as you can see, we can actually twist this this way. So if one bolt on the diff lines up here, but the other one, you know, we, we need it like this. So that's what I'm hoping. And then the, the further holes on the outside is if I've got a bigger diff. Now, to be fair, this will kind of hold anything. It's not diff related. Anything really that's awkward to hold, this should be able to hold. Now, I've just put the locking, lock, locking mechanism on. And as we can see, it's actually held nice and tight. The movement is here is because I haven't tightened these bolts properly here. But I'm not worried about that yet. What I am going to do is see if this actually works now. I haven't tested this yet. Right, this should hopefully just give me an idea to see if this is going to work how I want it to work. I haven't got the right bolts yet. I'm just going to screw something on for a minute. Hey! <laughs> right, I have nothing tightened at the minute. So it's wobbling around a bit more than what it should do. And I need to get proper bolts. To actually screw onto the diff. I wouldn't be doing this with a good diff. This diff casing, you'll see from one of my other videos, is destroyed. I was just wanting to see when I, get, when I do it proper, I'll either be using spacers or I'll be getting proper bolts. But anyway, this is essentially, it's still going to work. This is essentially it. So as we can see, I can now hold the diff. Now this is going to be a lot harder to turn once I tighten these bolts up. I'm still going to allow it to turn because as I can see, I can still see the advantage of this being able to turn, but for the minute, it, it, it works. I mean, I can't, it's great. <laughs> it works. So I'm going to see, this is another reason for using the bearing, to see if I can get it to turn. And I didn't want to weld a nut on one of these because you'd be restricted then. You could, only, you could only use two holes, so that's why I'm using the wing nut. Now, this is the main reason for having the bearing, because... Um, for whatever reason, 
No, yeah, I'm going to have to tighten this up. You're going to get the idea. For whatever, and to be fair, I mean, it's just not moving on that bearing. That bearing is designed to, to take the weight of a car, so a diff's not going to be any harm for it at all. But the best thing about the bearing, this is what I was hoping, if I ever do need to turn it, as we can see, I can then, yeah, now again, it's not tight, so it's going to cause me problems, but I can turn it 90 degrees. I can also turn it another 90 degrees, which means I can have the diff part facing there, and then, oh, dripping oil everywhere, and turn it completely around. So it absolutely works perfectly, and uh, yeah, it does what I wanted it to do. So I'm well happy with that. Um, yeah, I'm not saying you won't be able to buy one of these, you most probably can, but you, I'd say you can, and it might look a little bit <laughs> nicer than this, but I mean, I can paint this, so that's no problem. And, uh, but the other thing is, you've made it yourself, so I think that's a lot better. And, uh, you know, save yourself a few quid, and it's fun doing it. This really hasn't cost me anything. Um, these new bolts are only like two quid or something, um, and everything else is scrap pieces of metal. So, I mean, it is essentially cost me nothing, apart from a couple of hours doing it, obviously. But, I mean, literally, as regards, you know, it hasn't, hasn't cost me anything. And it's going to work absolutely lovely. It means I can set up diffs. I can do all the... I can, I'm going to be doing more videos on diffs shortly about how to set up backlashes, how to um, do all the, all the settings on the diff, what, basically, diffs are and all that stuff and the preload settings on the uh, main bearings and stuff, so I'm going to be doing all that. And now I've got something where I can hold the diff a lot easier and show the camera, show the internals of the diff. So I'm well happy with this. What I'm going to do is, no point me showing you on camera, but I'm going to be tightening these bolts at the bottom. Not fully tight, but just making it a bit hard to move these. And I might even give it a bit of a lick of a paint. Um, but that's not really the end of the world, the paint, but I might do, we'll just see. So yeah, sorted. This is how to make, well, I don't know what you'd call it, a holder of things. Holder of things. Um, but essentially a diff holder. So there we go. Look, hope it helps. Thumbs up and subscribe. Don't forget, get your hands dirty. See you for the next one.